Hey guys, Ru here, and in this video I'm gonna show you a few tricks. First of all, I'm gonna show you how to de-triangulate your mesh. You know, this mesh is triangulated, right? And if you wanted to fix any anything in terms of UVs or, you know, um, do some major changes to the mesh, this would be extremely difficult, and cleaning this up manually is just a chore, and you will have to do it for both high poly and low poly. The reason why we didn't give you uh, the detriangulated mesh, but only the triangulated mesh um, blend file, is because cleaning that thing is sim very simple, it's hard up, so now let me show you. So if I'm going to press Alt H, uh, these uh, pieces here were detriangulated, and it took me like, you know, just a few minutes, okay? And if I'm going to grab this piece, and you will see that there's a lot of triangles. Uh, if you want to detriangulate it with hard ops, you simply go here to operation and click on clean mesh. Now, clean mesh is an algorithm which is extremely uh, powerful, but you need to be careful when you're using it. What it does, it removes all the unnecessary geo that is not supporting the curvature, okay? Which, which means you need to be careful in the bevel areas, like for example here. You know, you need to check if this bevel is, you know, this edge here uh, is needed or not. Was there a, possibly an edge here or not? You need to check all these possibilities. So you need to kind of go back uh, to the triangulated mesh and see how the triangulated mesh looked. And sort of, you know, walk around and see how the curvature looks. And then, you know, go ahead and clean mesh and then remove all the junk that is actually left over like this. This is unnecessary. It's really easy very fast sometimes you get like remnants of triangulation on these small bevels so this is what we're checking for and once you're done checking it you know you simply um, hide your mesh and remember also to um, copy these changes to the other side so if i'm for example you know gonna grab this one it's triangulated i'm going to run clean mesh right and then i'm gonna check for all the issues seems everything is fine something is going on in here so i'm gonna clean it and there you go this is a good example of how you know sometimes triangulation can uh, detriangulation can mess up your mesh so we're going to clean these and see what the hell is going on in here right i think we're missing a bevel here that's the problem let me just turn this on so let's select this edge here all all the edge around right so here 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 and run a weight so um, just uh, let's clean this apply sharp thing and apply seam actually we don't need a seam here we only need um, weight and then we're gonna turn the bevel on and it should be fine now you're talking but there's still an issue here in the bottom and I'm not sure what it causing what's causing it so It was the uh, sharp edge on the uh, bevel on the bottom, on the on the inner side. So let's remove the um, the B weight from this one. One more time. Just let's go around this entire place here. Remove the uh, the edge and here as well. Not this one. This one, right? Oh, this should do so sometimes you see you need to do a bit of a cleanup and it's good now we can copy this to the other side so i'll take the symmetry and boom right and we sort it you might want to clean this as well so you might want to run a proper edge here if you really you know want to do a good job like this right then you remove these two and you know you're good to go and this is you know properly done in this properly done the triangulation right now you know continue like this through the whole the mesh if you want to clean it so if you want to get rid of triangle for some for some reason just this is how you do it but the other thing that i want to show you is how to fix this remember like when i told you that um it would be ideal if this indentation this kind of like a wedge cut which is present in a high poly here would be you know the best way to handle this would be to actually introduce this to low poly and then rebake this piece instead of you know fixing the maps manually because you know you should not be technically fixing um, normal maps manually the um, transitions between tones on the normal maps are so delicate and so um, so touchy and fiddly that there's no way you can actually you know fix it manually by painting it you're always gonna, gonna be ruining the um, the direction of normals 
Um, so if you know the, the manual doctoring of normal maps is just a dirty fix. So when I wanted to show it to you as a dirty hack, but now I want to show you the proper way of actually you know fixing this back piece. Okay. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna actually load the fully triangulated mesh. Okay. So we're going to um, remove this piece and I'm gonna load the uh, triangulated mesh, which is um, the render piece, and we're gonna turn off the render and uh, all the decals because we don't need them and now what we're gonna do is grab the high poly uh, high poly mesh by the way guys sorry about my voice is probably different than usual and a bit more deep than usual because i have terrible allergies and it tokyo is just you know infested with pollen at the moment and i'm bloody dying in here so recording for me is extremely difficult because i gotta turn off the air purifier when i'm recording so it's not fun guys so i'm sorry about my voice anyway um let's grab this piece from the high poly right and it's called base high right and we're going to duplicate this okay and put it in uh, the low poly okay and we're gonna close the high poly right we're gonna grab the low poly expand it okay and we're going to remove the base low okay and we're going to actually use the base high now the problem with doing this is that we're gonna have to re unwrap this piece but that's okay so we're gonna rename this to base low okay there we go so let's grab this piece and first of all what we need to do is change the number of bevels right so we need to go here and change the number of bevels to to one um we have hard normal setup which is great and now what we need to do is simply remove this uh this bit in the middle we could clean mesh but technically it's not really necessary because what we can do is simply hover over the mesh here and press l and we're gonna you know you can you can mirror this so we can do the same thing in here so select these and select Control plus until to this mesh here so now the bit in the middle is actually selected so we can you know delete vertices we can select the bit in the middle here and press L and go here and do the same thing, L, and then Control plus and F, okay? And we got this face in the middle, right? Then we're gonna control plus this again and F again. And then we're going to triangulate this. So control T and we're done, okay? And this is a mesh that we can work with. Uh, we, we're going to bake this, okay? Now what we could do technically, right, is improve these corners here because they're a little bit nasty. Let's see how the hypo looks. Hypo looks a bit cleaner. And the reason for it is simply number of battles. Let me show you something cool. So when I turn this off, right, and go back to low poly, this problem here is a problem of battles. Very simply, there's not enough edges to support this kind of a curvature and transition from this flat edge here that's also beveled to this one, okay? So if I turn off the wireframe by pressing Shift-C, um, you will see what happens, right? This transition transition here is just too, too steep. If I'm going to add more bevels, the problem disappears, right? So if I add three bevels, the problem disappears. Now, the only issue with this one is that it will introduce a lot of geo to our mesh. So instead of how many? Um, 19.5k um we have you know 20 20.3 20 which is 1000 polygons more right that's a that's a lot of geo right so you know we could go with two segments okay which you know which could be well possible okay what we're gonna do now is we're going to combine two types of bevels one's gonna be manual one's gonna be uh, be, be weight based and i'll show you how to do it okay so first of all what i'm gonna do is i'm going to clean the mesh okay which will remove all the triangulation from the mesh then i'm going to clean um these um edges these four edges right so sorry six uh, five edges one two three four five right um so you know um the ones that are inside meaning this one this one this one this one and this one and i'm going to right click and b weight and minus one which will remove the b weight from these uh, edges then i'm going to um, you know control b this and manually bevel them uh, with three segments okay and this will introduce a little bit of a havoc here but we can f you know we can fix this uh, this is simply hotlining with the bevel so we need to probably make it a little bit larger so make something like this and everything is peachy right and then you're going to have a shading problem um, in here because um, this these edges are affected by hard normals, which basically uh, virtually splits the edges and creates effect like uh, similar to sharp edges, okay, which means it flexes all the faces. Now, what we need to do is select all these edges here. 
uh, that are surrounding the new battle, the one we created manually, okay? And we need to add sharp to it, so uh, right click and mark sharp. And this will flex all the faces, yeah? So this is kind of like a dirty hack. Now, you will see that because we have a sharp edge here, we're gonna get this kind of like an artifact. But remember that we're gonna have a, the high poly bake baking onto this area, so it's gonna be fine. Now we're gonna try to bake, you know, just this piece and see how it looks. But I think it's gonna look much better. Now we need to symmetrize it to the other side. So you know D and symmetrize, and then we're gonna right, um, click on this one and let's just remove this edge from the middle because we don't need it. Select everything and control T and let's check the triangulation because it's actually causing some problems here, which is not very desirable. Yeah, so we're gonna have to uh, you know manually tackle these areas, okay? So again. Uh, right click here and subdivide and bring this dot in here so gg and bring it over here select these and you know operations star connect and this again causes problem because it's actually overlaps with this bevel here so what we need to do is do something else okay we're going to try to do it this way right uh, we're going to try to connect it in here which is actually in between the bevels right so Let's try to cheat it a little bit here and operation star connect. And you see now everything is more or less fine. I mean, this is not ideal here, but you know what? You know, there are limitations to how far you can push this thing. Another thing that we could do is grab these dots and move them on uh, X axis a little bit closer here. So, you know, this shading kind of is, it's, you know, kind of more contained, if you will. Now on the other side, we need to do the same thing. So simply, you know, run the edge here very closely like this, right? And subdivide it okay so subdivide it and select these and run them to um, by star connect right and then everything should be fine so select everything control T we still got a problem here which is interesting there is some kind of a disaster here let's clean this let's clean this one here as well let's combine this manually okay so let's run an edge here like this okay and then let's see if D is gonna work, right? So let's see, J and J, and there you go. I will have to do the same thing in here, right? So we're going to, um, we're going to symmetrize it first, right? So symmetrize it first, and then um, let's remove this one, and we're going to run an edge here in between them, okay, come on, J, and then we're gonna connect these manually, right, and it should be fine, there you go, select everything, control T, and now everything should be peachy, now there you go, this is how you hack this piece and sort of create a bit more um, better base for the bake so now let's try to bake this okay so what we're gonna do is um let's grab you know let's grab everything actually because why not and let's bring it to mamoset toolbag right now for some interesting reason this piece was moved you see that it's actually misaligned let me show you how to fix this you select the high poly to which you're gonna be aligning right and then you simply go uh, cursor to select it, which is going to move it to the origin point. Select the low poly, right? The low poly outside, and move it to cursor. Boom! Now it's aligned. Okay, so there you go. Not sure what happened over there, but um, you know we fixed this. Now what we need to do is, once we fix this one, right? We need to re-unwrap the low poly because remember that. Uh, we actually added some geo that wasn't there before so we need to grab this base right this base piece and let's unwrap it and go to uv editing and see how it unwraps it unwraps okay but we need to fix these you know uh, these squarish bits also this is not ideal but you know there's not much we can do about it so what we're gonna do is you know expand this a little bit here so we can see Let's go to edge mode and select this edge, select this edge, and select this edge, and SX0, and let's move it on x-axis here, and then we're gonna select the rest of them, so, um, in fact, let's just move the whole thing a little bit to the left, okay? So GX, move it here, so we don't select anything by accident, and we can actually uh, go with the box select, so select everything on this side, so deselect everything, and then select everything here and SX0 it should be fine 
uh, with emphasis on should be. This one again got uh, kind of moved, so let's go to vertex mode and select the vert, G, GY, and move it to the top. And this one, GY, and move it to the top. And everything should be peachy. We could, you know, go to edge mode and SY0 to make it straight. And uh, select everything here, so L, and scale it in like this and maybe make it a little bit longer and scale it right a bit more there we go now the same with this one so you know select this one here on the side and make sure that you're selecting you know only these okay on the on the right side don't select too much sx0 and you know move it here select everything and move it this way and then we're going to select these pieces here and here and we need to select all these here i know it's disorienting but you know we can beat this now go to vert mode and gy and drop it down and select this one and gy and drop it down so they don't overlap right and we could go to edge mode and s y0 to straighten this edge and move it a little bit to the to the to the bottom and this one too is y0 so it's straight and then you know select everything and uh make it narrower and maybe a little bit longer right okay cool and then what we need to do is check the textile density right so uh, let's make this uv space a little bit smaller and let's go to textile density view so let's load this grid because we can't see it in the, at the moment um so let's go to a mat uh, shade editor and let's grab the um, image texture and uh, plug it in right and choose the grid which is uh, grid 4k it's the one not this one okay go here to look dev and We have materials plugged in right so let's switch them off okay and let's select this mat okay and simply um invert it right like this the control i and uh, invert the selection and go to mats and you know copy to select it and now we get this and now we need to match this one to the other ones right so Let's go to N and let's go to Zen UV and let's select all the faces and uh, get TD. Mm, select this one, right? And set TD. And then we're going to select everything. Go to it, face mode, select everything again, right? Select everything here. And we're going to pack this, okay? So collapse this, press N, go to UV and pack master 2 and pack. And now, you know, you got this new uh, UV layout packed, okay? So now what we're going to do is grab uh, the high poly, right? And the low poly, right? Select everything. And then Control S, export FBX. And let's export it um, as final fixed to an export. Cool. Now let's grab my Mosset tool bag. And make it a little bit bigger. And load the mesh so let's load it and let me find this file then um, this is going to be this one I think right so we got low poly and we got a high poly correct and the low poly is actually now with these cuts out cutouts in the back so let's try to bake this right so we're gonna go to 4k and you know 64 um, resolution on race we're gonna bake only normal actually i'm gonna grab ambient occlusion as well and uh, we're gonna bake this um, to a new file so we're gonna select a um, photoshop file because it's gonna be easier and just you know let's bake this and let's see what's gonna happen okay I see the bake in the back and now you see that uh, it just looks beautiful right so this is 
exactly why I said that, you know, um, the best way to tackle this problem would be to literally, um, you know, create these cutoffs. You see the difference between this one and the previous one, right? We don't even have to, you know, fix this queue in here. So if you're working on a model and you got this kind of a problem, you can either go with a dirty hack and, you know, fix your, fix your maps very quickly. But like I said, it's not the best practice because you're actually damaging the map and you completely ruin the, the direction of normals. And there's no way that a human can actually fix this because the uh, um, differences between values on the normal map are so minute that you literally cannot cover it perfectly with brush or stamp tool, right? This is the proper way of fixing this. It requires a bit of work, but you can see that it works perfectly and the maps are flawless. And, you know, if we skew them, uh, if you correct the skew now, uh, you would have absolutely flawless and normal normal and AO bakes for your model. I want to get anyway guys hope you um, find it useful and you know hope it helps you out and this is how you handle these kind of a problem. So so we had an interesting um you know bevel issue here and you see that uh, these bevels look beautiful because the high poly baked onto them correctly. So you know we got this covered as well and we didn't really gain much geo we gained maybe like 200 you know 200 polys which is not terrible. Uh, let me just turn off the high poly for a sec. And we got 19.6, so we were like 19 points, what, 5 or 4 or something, right? So maybe, you know, two or 100 polygons is just nothing comparing to, you know, uh, to the entirety of the model. Now, if you wanted to um, optimize this model a little bit further, it's also possible because, for example, let me show you something, right? You know, these edges here on the bottom, right? Let me just collapse this because we don't need it. These edges here on the bottom are not really needed, okay? You could easily remove this. Now, the way to remove this, you need to remove the triangulation, of course, so do it before you triangulate it, so clean mesh. And what you could do, because, you know, we want to maintain, we want to maintain uh, this bevel in the corner, right? So what you, what you could do is just run a, a very, you know, quick knife cut in here like this, and then knife cut on the other side and remove this entire edge from the bottom which would probably save a little bit of polys, okay? I mean, you know, it would it would make things a little bit less heavy. So you could remove this one, okay? Because it's on the bottom, on, you know, it, object stands on it. So this bevel here on the bottom is not really visible, right? So you could remove all these edges around on the bottom. And you could shave a little bit of polys, not much probably. The same maybe in the, in the middle here, you know, underneath here, this could possibly arguably be removed uh, and then again you would say if you know a little bit of polygons on this edge here uh, the biggest poly counts that you get hit by are these because it's gonna get bevel and triangulated so you know this would save you a little bit of polys as well so if I remove this edge here right so I'm gonna run it um, all the way here and you know this way right and we're gonna run it all the way up to here okay and we're gonna remove this faces right and then i'm going to you know mirror to the other side and i'm gonna mirror this one to the other side right you see here we shaved about you know 100 100 polygons 150 so you could maybe maybe shave another k you know another i don't know 800 if you really you know went through this mesh in in a really meticulous fashion and remove all this junk that you truly don't need like for example this one here we don't need it too so we can remove it right and we don't need this one too it's triangulated so you know you could save a little bit um save a little bit of um you know polygons but truly you know if it's 20k or 19k it doesn't really matter if it was 10k and 20k that's the difference but you know 19k and 20k it just doesn't really matter so you know you're good with this okay guys it's a last tip here so we baked all the new maps right we got all the new fbx's and now we need to update our textures because you know uh, we still have this kind of a um kind of wonky situation here at the back right so we need to replace everything so very simply go to setup and you know load your new fbx so i'm gonna navigate to a folder when i have it and I'm gonna load my low poly, uh, low poly mesh, right? Now remember that we get the new um, UVs and new everything, so uh, you know this is gonna get reset in a way. So you need to upload all the new maps. So you need to go to normals and load your new new normal map. So um, let's go to Mamosa toolbag uh, maps, and I'm gonna load these. 
I'm going to load my new occlusion map, okay? I'm going to load my new curvature map, right? And I'm going to load my new ID map, because they all need to be replaced, right? And this will kind of fix the problem, but you see that we have uh, several areas here that we need to kind of fiddle with. So all you need to do really is just play with uh, with the layers, okay? Sometimes the order of the layer is a problem. Sometimes it's, you know, uh, the way the IDs have been selected, etc. But in here, let's try to grab this painted metal. I think it's the... Not this one. Um, this one? Where's the yellow one? That's the one. So let's uh, try to click on this one, go to uh, an ID map and try to select this and see if it's going to work. See, it doesn't really work for some, you know, kind of crazy reason. And this is uh, the kind of a limitation of, um, of Quixel Mixer. Okay, so what we're going to do is grab this uh, painted yellow metal and, you know, bring it to the top here. Okay, so bring it on top, right? And uh, let's this liquid on top and text on top text went into the layer now so we're gonna be on top here and one more time text has to be on top it's a little bit fiddly but you know select this layer and um, go to ID map let's try to select this one again and there you go that's done the trick and then you know if you want to you can change the color of screws so you can simply deselect it from screws right here and do something like this and Bob Jungle and you're done so everything is peachy now we kind of lost um, the AO so we need to bring it back what you can do is grab this solid color and drag it on top which is dead basically you see and it's gonna bring it on top so you gotta play with the layers here and see which one should be you know which one should be where but uh, more or less you know this is it and then you save it and you're fine. So you don't have to retexture everything. All you need to do is bring your maps in and then simply fiddle with colors. Like I said, Quixel Mixer is a little bit, you know, touchy with ID maps. So you need to, you know, kind of play with them, right? And you're going to be fine. Okay, guys, that's it for the Quixel Mixer part and how to update your uh, texturing uh, with the new maps. And of course, don't forget that then you need to go to Blender. And what you need to do in Blender uh, in the low poly, right? You gotta go to. Uh, let's just sp split the screen in two. Let me just make it smaller because you probably can't see what I'm doing. There we go. Um, let me just split this. Go to shader editor and remember that. So remember then you need to re-upload the new maps to uh, these windows. So albedo map, AO map, uh, metalness map, roughness, and. Um, normal map so it's gonna get updated so when you you know click on the on the model you know you're gonna have the new model um with the new textures so when i'm gonna click on this back piece here right this one and bring it to local here you can see that this is a new piece uh with new textures we got some textures spill in here which is interesting i'm not sure what's causing this um this is actually quite curious uh, this is some kind of a texture spill which is interesting. We could actually look into this, um, into Mamosa toolbox and see what's up. But this looks like a texture spill, which is uh, interesting. Or it's a feature of, you know, of this uh, particular material, but I doubt it. This looks uh, like a kind of a glitch in Mamo in Quixel Mixer. Like I said, Quixel Mixer has kind of a problem with with ID maps. So what we could do is go to Blender, right, and check this piece again. Uh, for the IDs, but it doesn't really look like uh, this should be, you know, affected by a different ID because ID is assigned to it uh, by the, you know, by the high poly. So if I'm gonna go to the high poly, right, and uh, get out of the local mode and grab this base piece and go here to uh, solid view and go to, you know, studio matcap, you can see that it's actually um sharing the material id with this piece so there should be no spill in here whatsoever so in my opinion this is some kind of a quixel mixer glitch maybe caused by the fact that we simply reapply new maps to to the model anyway it's just here in the corner so i don't really care about that but um 
just letting you guys know that you know might want to be aware of issues like this a quick sum mixer is a still new program they're still working on improving it so and it's free you know so we shouldn't complain too much like we shouldn't complain about blender you know um, but um and there you go um that's how you do it anyway that's it for the quick sum mixer part anyway guys this is the last video from me hope you enjoyed it i hope it had more more tricks and tips to your tool tool set to how to you know how to tackle interesting issues with baking and bevels and you know triangulations and all that all right guys well best of luck uh, with your models thank you for watching and i catch you in the next course